Okay. Okay, I started. All right. Red slider. All right. Hello. Welcome to Jim and Friends Read the News. My name is Jim Van Vonderen, and I am the producer of this show. The things you will hear over the next hour represent the views of Jim Van Vonderen and the people making them. All opinions and quotations in no way represent River West Radio and are the sole responsibility of the producer, guests, and callers. River West Radio is not liable for any legal issues arising from the content of this program. All right, hello everybody. Today we are with Zavel Play and Nick Ryan. Uh, Nick Ryan. Ryan. Mm-hmm. How's it going, Jim? It's going very well. First time on Jim and Friends. Thank you for yeah. joining us. Thanks for having me on. I almost drank your coffee. It looks just like it looks just like my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should show the audience your coffees. Yeah, they're, <laughs> strike, they're strikingly, strikingly similar. There, there we are. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, today is September 5th, no, 16th. 16th. September 16th. Um, as I always start with the Packers news, they won on Thursday. Oh, they really? Play today. They played Thursday. Oh, so it's uh, one, one, the, one up, one down. From yep, the they're one and one. And they look much better on this second, uh, second one, so uh, I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but the defense was looking tenacious. Uh-huh. Tenacious D. <laughs> Which is supposedly where the group Tenacious D got its name. Really? Because uh, Marv Albert, an announcer for basketball, they were watching like a Knicks game. And uh, he had said that the Knicks were playing Tenacious D. Oh. And they loved it. And bam, they took it. And, uh, and now you know the rest of the story of Tenacious D. Huh. That, that does kind of make sense. Because doesn't when I've never thought about it, doesn't really... What would that mean otherwise? Yeah, tena- it's just such a strange name. Yeah, Tenacious D. Well, yeah, that's uh, who is the now you know the rest of the story guy. Oh, I've never heard of that. Bill Hart Harvey. Harvey? Oh, Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey. Yeah. Yeah, Paul yeah. Harvey. I forget his quote was it. And now. And now you know the rest of the story, because oh, okay. his the his show was uh, he would tell you about a person's life growing up. And, but he would never tell the person's name. You know, he would just, he would just say this person the whole time. Yeah. And then the big thing was at the end, he would say, and that person was, you know, Thomas Jefferson. And everyone would be like, whoa, that was Thomas Jefferson's life? And uh, now you know the rest of the story, and that would be the end of the show. Hmm. I loved that show as a kid. Yeah, what show? Was what show is Paul Harvey. Paul I'm Harvey. Sure, I'm sure there you can find Paul Harvey shows on the internet somewhere. Oh, yeah, oh I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, so check out Paul Harvey. Um, my okay, favorite so one was the uh, the one for the guy who did uh who who wrote um Peter Pan. He had a really good one. I oh really? As a kid, yeah. But then they kind of made the movie Finding Neverland, which was telling his story. So uh-huh. I think that if you've seen Finding Neverland, Neverland, it wouldn't be the same listening to the Paul Harvey show telling you it. Because right. You already know the rest of the story. I see. <laughs> and knowing the rest of the but story kind of ruins Paul Harvey's the story. great strengths uh, was his what? long silences. Oh yeah, that's right. He would always have ridiculously long silences, but it made it interesting. Mm-hmm. He'd so keep you hanging. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's that impeccable timing. <laughs> also, I was just saying, Nick, uh, thank you again for all your technical support. You pretty much. Uh, technically back up all of riverwestradio.com so I want to give yeah, yeah Nick is the I don't know if you get enough of the credit for the behind the scenes work of yeah. River West Radio well Zav you do that too of course thanks so. yeah Nick does more of the technical and I do more of the I don't know what you call it administrative maybe something like that you're, you're also you're kind of whether you want to or not you're kind of the face of River West Radio but it is your store so yeah Things get split up pretty evenly. Yeah. And then, of course, I'm here a lot because I work here. So then, in a sense, I'm like just keeping the radio station open. You kind of become the spokesman in a way, but not really as well. I try not to, but right. it, it ends up that way occasionally. Well, either way. Yeah. Thank well, you and good job. Thank you. Thanks, uh, 
Today in history. Oh, yes. Well, now, this is September 17th, so actually it's tomorrow in history. But close close enough, the town of Boston was founded by John Winthrop as an extension of the colony at Salem. Its name after the town is named after the town of the same name in Lincolnshire, Lincolnshire, England. Hmm. Well, here we go. Yeah. I did not know that. That was strangely phrased. I would have said it's named after the town, a town by the same name. Um, But they said of the same name. Um, 1787, the uh, Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia approves the Constitution for the United States of America. 1787. Okay. Um, Let's see. Let me jump a little bit forward here. Because there's a lot of stuff that happened a long time ago on this day. Uh... 1959, the X-15 rocket plane made its first flight Oh, today. wow. There we go. Aviation news. And then uh, <laughs> 1976, the space shuttle unve- is unveiled to the public. Ah. Yeah. People who were born... <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> this is all on the... I don't know why I'm looking at the 17th. I, I, somehow I'm on the 17th. Wait a second. <laughs> I'm giving you guys the what? wrong day. <laughs> Today is the 16th. Why would it do that to me? Um, okay. Whoa. The pilgrims sail from England on the Mayflower in 1620. On 1620. This day. 1620. Wow, what is that? That's yeah. 400 years just about. Huh? Wait, yeah, no, 400. At least, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I guess you're right. 2020. Say it's 2020. 1620. Back when people had to yeah. buckle their shoes. Um, right. General Motor <laughs> GM filed their papers of incorporation yeah. on this day. Interesting. Uh, oh, here's an interesting thing. 1920, 30 people were killed in a terrorist bombing in New York's Wall Street Financial District. 1920. Huh. I never heard about that. No, me neither. It's kind of parallel to yeah, 9 11 in some ways. Right. Yeah, really close even. to 9-11, too. Because mm-hmm. 9-11 was what? Like four days, five days ago, six days ago. Yeah. Mm. Bizarre. W- wasn't the Empire State Building also um, flown, uh, into? flown into by like... Uh, in, the, in 42 or something like that? There was a film made about that. Really? Yeah. It wasn't King Kong? <laughs> you never heard about it? It was around that? the time I of King Kong. I didn't hear about that. I, I, time heard, of King I didn't Kong. know about it until just recently. Oh, and uh, I think it was, it was during World War II and... Um, I can't remember the details of it. I think it was um, like uh, enemy forces. I because there was also like uh, there are a couple other big crashes, like um, a helicopter or something flew into the. You want to pick that up? Is that us? Uh, to pick up, I press uh, white. Call. And then, and then I hit the button. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hey. Um. Hey. Is this Justin Prop? Yeah. Hey, thanks for calling. Oh, hey. Yeah. Oh, hey. David Byrne. You're, you're at David Byrne. Mm-hmm. How is it? Right there. Oh, no, I know. It's pretty good. All right. Uh, uh, just, yeah. that, just, that's a gleaming endorsement for the David Byrne concert. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Oh, is that him in the background? No, I think that's yeah. Oh, so he's not. You're at the Riverside, right? Yes, sir. How, how's the Riverside looking? Is it packed? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was sold out like immediately, I guess. St. Vincent's the band that's playing right now? No, no, no. Oh, man. You're, sounding, you're, you're, you're breaking up on me here, but uh, it, uh, I, I can't tell a whole lot of what you're saying. Oh, there's a there's a lot of music is it's loud there I can tell. Um, 
Well, I, I thank you much for calling. I don't know how well you can hear me. Oh, yeah, crystal clear. Oh, all right. Thanks, no, we're thanks coming for calling, clear. Justin. That's good. Well, thank you for calling. Enjoy the show for us. Yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have a report next week. All right. Yeah, take notes. <laughs> 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 all right, thanks for calling. Enjoy the show. All right, all right. Well, that was Justin live from the Riverside in the David Byrne concert. I, th I think he was talking about um, someone dancing in front of him. Yeah, I, I, I gathered a little. I, I always think uh, like concert dancing is always like a little bit awkward, a little bit weird. <laughs> Everyone facing in the same direction. Like, you know, some mm. people kind of getting into it, like... There's only no, ever no, been no. one kind of concert dancing that I have not felt weird doing, mm -hmm. and that's punk rock mosh pitting. Oh, yeah. Because I, that's just kind of... Well, there's more physical contact right. and that sort of thing. Yeah, it just brings me back to, like, football practice or something. <laughs> oh, <it> seems, <laughs> seem, yeah, it came more natural, the dancing in the mosh pit. Oh, oh, so you're you're for it? I thought you were saying it's the one you don't like. No, it's the only, it's the only one, one you it's do. The only like. one that I oh, okay. feel comfortable doing. Uh -huh. Everything, all the other ones, yeah. Like Nick was saying, concert dancing is a little awkward, depending. Yeah. Well, especially yeah. if you're in like a place with seats, that then it's just oh, terribly yeah, awkward. Then I, don't know. I don't even know what you're supposed to do. Yeah, sway sway back and forth like like that guy in front of Justin. Yeah, throw your lighter in the air, right? That's, <laughs> that's, that's that's what I got. I saw Metallica that way, and it was yeah. I mean, it was cool, but they yeah, it just felt weird being constricted to a chair. That's <laughs> yeah. all you can do is either sit up. Can't or really move your feet. All you can do is stand up or sit down. But you're not gonna sit down. That's so all you can do is stand up in one spot the whole time. But it's cool to see the band. Looks like it's about... Uh, oh, yeah, weather report. We don't do that one. Yeah, we've never done that. It looks around 67 degrees here in Milwaukee. Humidity of 52% with the wind uh, south, 7 miles per hour. Um, uh, today in weather history... <laughs> Sorry. Right. Sorry. No, that's fine. The today in history, I like The San the Felipe hurricane struck Palm Beach, Florida, dumping 27.43 inches of rain on uh, <laughs> Palm Beach, Florida in uh, 1928. Yeah. Well, it, um, I don't know. Do you have a, the word of the day on there? Yes. Should. There's quote of the day and word of the day. Uh, we'll start with whichever one. Who you, says? You oh, Miriam like. Webster. Well, why don't you take this one, Nick? Since you can see this, see this computer. The word of the day, uh, Miriam Webster's word of the day is mercurial. Um, mercurial. Actually, if we could get, could we get? A, um, if you click on the uh, little uh, speaker. Mercurial. Well, let's. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Let me. Uh, Oh, have to. Let's hear how you pronounce I'll, mercurial. 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 Characterized by rapid and unpredictable changeableness of mood. I have some friends who are mercurial. Yeah. We're, I have I, one in particular that I can think of. Probably a lot of friends who are mercurial. Um, yeah. Of relating to, containing, or caused by mercury. Oh, how do you? I have you a couple of friends who are that kind of mercurial. How do you spell mercurial? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is the word of the day. Uh, M. Yep. E. R. C. U. R. I. A. L. Uncle Chris felt mercurial. a touch of embarrassment. It occurred to him that he had been betrayed by his mercurial temperament. Oh. Into an attitude which, considering the circumstances, was perhaps a trifle too jubilant. A trifle too jubilant. Well, mercurial. Try and get that into He your gave his mustache a pull and reverted to the minor key. <laughs> <Get this out. laughs> 
Uh, what about today's quote? Your quote of the day. Where does that part come from? He gave his mustache a little bit of the minor key. <laughs> it does add. It sounds to like it's from an old book or something. Mm-hmm. Um, what's today's quote, Nick? Oh. Uh, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. All right. That's okay. uh, well, that's, less kinda, that's been around. That's been around brown. for a lot of days. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Les Brown? Oh, Les Brown. Les Brown. Who's Les Brown? He's I have the no man idea. who said shoot <laughs> for the moon. Okay. Um, well, you should he, shoot for the moon. He Did yeah. he coin that term? Did he coin the shoot for the moon even if you miss, you'll land among the stars? I, I'm guessing... It must have been attributed. Shoot for the moon must have been a phrase of speech. Yeah, maybe he just added the second part. I wonder yeah. if I could do that. Or oh, anyone shoot can for do the moon. Just gra- no, grab a quote that's already out there, but just yeah. add an end to it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Just give it like a little, yeah, he's a little modifier. Or how about end. you do? I could do shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars that shine and glimmer in the sky. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what you want to do, right? You want to shine and glimmer in the sky. Or you land I among think. the stars, like the ones in Hollywood. Yeah. Well. <laughs> See, now that's, maybe when I think about it that way, maybe shooting for the moon isn't always the best thing. Yeah. Yeah, look at what happened uh, to look, this. Look what uh, happens to some of the stars. Yeah. Or what's what's happening they to like this woman? The, the one. What the, comes up must come down. <laughs> the prince's <laughs> wife. What's her name? <laughs> yes. Yes, what comes up must follow down. Uh, and that's interesting that that, you know, there are certain, I've, I've been um, interested in the physics properties of ideas. And yeah. that's one of those that what goes up must come down. It's not just not just in terms of a, a physical thing like a stone going up in the air that oh, must right. come down, but also just like success. Mm-hmm. You know, success doesn't actually have a weight to it, but it no. actually obeys certain kinds of properties like physics. You know, that's interesting to think it's about. Because the success does not have a Higgs boson. Could we don't know? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Did we cover that one yet? Oh, yeah. yeah. Remember we did. even uh, yeah, searched yeah, for the pronunciation did. of right. boson. Yeah, that's right. We did. <laughs> we love our pronunciation. Yeah, we're all about Jim that. <laughs> so what else is on our uh, on our agenda for tonight? Um, well, I there was the deaf gerbils who can hear again with human stem cells. Mm, yes. Um, so Do you want to field that one, Jim, or should we... Well, you know, it, it, it's one of the of ones the where you could probably just probably go ahead and delete that tab because I don't think I really even need the science of it. Uh-huh. It's just the headlines good enough. Right. So, um, yeah. Do they have, uh, are those the gerbils that uh, have the human ears? They managed to graph. No way. I yeah, that's how they that. did it, I'm pretty sure. Really? Well, yeah, they uh, they grew the the ears on a mouse and then they grafted them onto a gerbil. Oh yeah, it does say They're they human used human ears. embryonic stem cells. So I'm guessing that must mean human sized ears. On that would gerbils. be. Cr- I wish I could had, we had a picture of that. Well, um, you guys <laughs> remember though they. No, the picture is right here. As Avner are looking at it, it's yeah. crazy. Oh really? No. 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 <laughs> no, no. This is no. This is true though. You're. It, even though you're making a joke, Nick, mm. that one of the first skin graft um, breakthroughs was when they skin grafted a human ear onto the back of a mouse. Do you remember that? Or, or they grew an ear on a mouse, you mean, yeah, right? something like that. I know. An I know. Actual yeah, I ear. That and I remember familiar. seeing that picture. Well, like, that was one of the, the early projects uh, where they were growing something onto, like, a, where they were growing like a organ onto like some sort of like skeleton Mm -hmm. and like they grew it and it had it was some stem cell you know yeah so maybe this is sort of an extension of that it if yeah definitely it probably is the same sort of technology Hmm. but it yeah it it sounds like the i don't know why human i'm kind of curious about the specifics because it sounds like um they're using human stem cells yeah. To like, uh, you know, um, cure this. Yeah, you that's know, what uh, it, I read it. Problem quickly. In the gerbils. But, um, that's like what it, it sounds. They were actually using human stem cells and gerbils. Without, I didn't. I didn't think there were human parts, but there could have been. Um, but anyway, I, my my main question. I was just gonna get uh, an idea of what people thought of stem cell research. Yeah. For or against. <laughs> um, trepidatious. <laughs> Tenacious. Tenacious D. 
Well, Def that's what we did. Origins of Tranicious. Definitely Tranicious. four. I, I don't even know if there is an argument against stem cell research that even, you know, seems uh, like a reasonable argument by any means to me. Um, I hear you. I'm, I'm pretty know. much for it. But if anyone wants to learn more about stem cells and how they actually do the research and the different kinds of cells and the different ways they get the cells, mm -hmm. maticommunitymedia.com, there was uh, the Cardinal Stritch University speaker series had a, uh, he was actually like, not a monk. He looked like a monk, but he wasn't a monk. Um, I think he was just a priest. Um, but he does a he did a very good um, just a speech, I guess, about stem cells and how they were using them, um, where they got them from, and then he so he he did the science of it, and then he also then said why the church took the stance that they took on different kinds of stem cells uh -huh. research. So he wasn't totally against stem cell research. He was only against certain types of it. And, and, and what uh, like uh, reasons did the... So the, the church um, had some knowledge about like um, some of these yeah. fields of research so, and you know, they actually... It was real uh, reasons. Yeah, he's a scientist, you know, pre-scientist. But... Um, so he, there was just, it was all about the way they extracted the stem cells that then would be against the church from his point of view. From unborn fetuses, probably, right? Or something like that. Not always. So they kind of always say that that's where it's coming from, but there's different ways to kind of like grow stem cells. So that, that was the one, of course, that they were against. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there were other ways that they were getting cells too, and they were different. Now they had to go into scientific names for the types of cells, but uh -huh. for the most part, they're all stem cells. Uh -huh. As I put my fingers up in quotations, stem cells. Um, so there was some stem cell research that the uh, church would have no problem with. It was just the uh, the well, the unborn fetus, like uh, South Park. Um, Chris Reeves eating babies type of <laughs> stem cell research that they were obviously against. Uh -huh. But um, no, stem cell research. And I wanted, that was a good segue to check out MattaCommunityMedia.com video of him giving uh, that stance on stem cells and actually has a lot of the science then of where stem cells are coming from because a lot of people think, oh, they're just unborn fetuses. Not always. There are Matic different ways of doing it. Uh, Matta has a like a media archive online. That yes. Um, so MilwaukeeCommunityMedia.com, and you can there's a search on there. And you can search. I would search Cardinal Stritch, and that should give up all the speaker series things. And then that show will be on there. Now the archive is not very deep, as we haven't um, as the website is new. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it's actually fair. It's it's roughly probably the same age as RiverWestRadio.com. You you know. helped develop the website, right? Yeah. Or that's like your yeah. thing. That's yeah. yeah. I did that, but you're much better at it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's still a work I'm, in progress. But um yeah. yeah. So there's the videos on there, and now we, there is a lot of videos on there now because since we started, every show gets loaded onto it. So it's starting to add up. So that's oh, why yeah. you want to use the search engine. Otherwise, you'll be hitting the older entries button forever. So, um, but it is on there. Cool. Um, so check that out. Yeah, I really want to. And also, don't think that stem cells are always baby fetuses. They are not. <laughs> Only some of them are. <laughs> and they go more in depth on that. Um, and then... Uh, another quick one is uh, Zuckerberg did a talk. Facebook gained six point eight billion dollars, bringing their bringing their stock up. I bring up stock updates every now and then. Uh, Facebook just got a boost from good old Zuckerberg. Um, did you hear anything about this? Not really. No. Me neither. Six point eight billion though sounds like a lot of money to be put pumped back into it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, apparently they're figuring out better ways. Oh, that's what it was. They're figuring out better ways for them to market their customers' information to companies. Yeah. Pretty much better ways for them to use your information. Yeah. Or, I guess, maybe 
ways that they can. I mean, if you you are using their website, so you are giving them all your information, right? Which then people feel all weird about the privacy, but it's like, well, you did volunteer all that information to a website, right? Of course, yeah. I mean, I think there's something in the user agreement that probably, you mm -hmm. know, um, makes uh, makes it pretty clear to the user and that uh, you know puts Facebook in the clear, but. Um, is that is that like their main uh, source of uh, revenue or uh, you all, is there? I don't. It's I advertising space. Is there, all that is. Is there a lot of advertising space on Facebook? There's a fair amount. If you uh, look at the, it's always on the right side, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's also um, their thing being that companies will be able to pinpoint their customers. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was that's their supposed to be their big advantage for your uh -huh. for your advertising as where, you know, obviously cuz when you're logged in it's no longer just an IP, they know like what in the They got everything on you. Yeah. So uh, there's of course laws of I don't know the, the laws exactly, but there are laws of course about what they can share and can't share, but apparently he gave a speech about finding new ways for Facebook to use your information to then market to you mm -hmm. and then they would have that info to give to potential clients which means to me that eventually Facebook is going to be just like a minority re report yeah whereas when you're walking like when he's walking down the hallway in the mall it's just every ad is personalized to you sure so Facebook is just going to be ads personalized to you which I'm not going to say is a bad thing if you have a as long as you have a cell phone in your pocket yeah I mean, and that's, that's really not too far off it's, right well I have this idea of a way of resisting that which I'm not sure how you do it just yet but um trading identities with people and like one way of doing it that I thought of is getting into Gattaca again oh really oh I don't know Gattaca <laughs> no, no, go ahead, oh, okay. go ahead, go ahead anyway um my thought was or one thing I discovered is like you know how you get those roundies like uh cards where you get so you get the discount when you go to pick and save or whatever or mm -hmm. you know whatever grocery store you go to right. you get this little they give you a card and, and then you give it to the cashier and then they swipe more it. and more stores are starting to use yeah those most too. most stores use those walgreens right? just implemented so, them today oh i'm oh. sure oh okay yeah, yeah, more this day in yeah this <laughs> day in the news um so my idea was okay if they want to do that, because obviously there's a reason for it, which is that they watch your purchase history. They look at what kind of, they profile you in a sense. Mm -hmm. So well, my idea is, okay, absolutely. go get yours, Jim. I'll get mine, and we just trade them. Oh, yeah. And then the Jim Van Ronderen will look as though he's purchasing everything that Zava Play purchases and vice versa. Right. I actually use someone else's that. pick and save card. <laughs> yeah. So you're already. punch in their phone number. You're already yeah. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and I don't think there's anything wrong about that because no, you're just no. not giving these companies more information than they need. You know you what might I mean? Be giving you're the still, wrong information. You're still buying well, stuff they're at the still disc getting information though. They're just it's getting just, disinformation. They're associating <laughs> exactly. They're associating it with the wrong purchaser. Right. So if you could do that on a bigger scale, like with Facebook, if you and I could trade Facebook profiles or something, but yeah. then how do you do that with like friendship and stuff? That gets confusing. Does that help anything though to screw the well, information? Up. It helps in the sense that they can't, um, they they don't have the same kind of power over you. No, you know, that that the sort of it's one of those things where it's always it's never a problem until it becomes or provide a the same service. You know, potentially. That's true. Yeah, depends if you look at like the. Yeah, I mean, you might like I might be walking down the hall, the and around. then there'll be marketing things to Jim Van Vonderen when I'm walking down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, which might, in a sense, it's not a deal. Is maybe I'm doing myself a disservice as a as, as a, a consumer co as a consumer, but then maybe in another way, I'm doing myself a I'm saving myself from being completely profiled. Of, yeah completely profiled by I these guess, by these companies i guess i just don't have a big problem with companies profiling me but i could see where people will, that would be kind of eerie yeah like it's one of those things you can't even really say why it's a problem it well, may not be a problem for a while for uh speaking for myself um i when i'm looking up uh like doing uh some shopping and doing some research online if i'm typing in a product like i would like you know, an unbiased, you know, uh, the search results to, like, you know, come up uh, oh, in an unbiased yeah. order. Right. So I can do, like, my own, because I like to do my own research when it comes to, like, you know, pretty much anything, uh, and especially uh, 
most definitely purchases and like I think a lot of people aren't that interested always in doing like a ton of research and they would you know maybe rather have Google just show them exactly like which style like you know like um, you know bedroom curtains you know like would suit them best and not have to like look through a bunch of crap but yeah you know, true. I, I mean, in a sense it makes you it, it sort of force forces people into a stereotype of themselves mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like for example, I like to look up certain kinds of subjects. I listen to a lot of lectures online, and I'm always trying to break myself out of my patterns. And this just uh, kind of reinforces all those no, patterns. It, yeah, it definitely does. So that's kind of irritating. It does reinforce your bias. Yeah. Which would definitely obviously be yeah, so that, like, that would be har- that would be you, harmful yeah, for just human political... growth in general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you're just going to re- yeah. yeah. right. You're going to reinforce your brain that that's the only way to think. Yeah, a right-wing mm-hmm. conservative person is going to constantly get right-wing conservative right. And then their opinions Everything. are just going to be and constantly a, and built. And a liberal and sort of hippie, yeah. liberal granola person is going to keep getting yeah. that stuff reinforced. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is actually kind of scary. I never thought of it that way. I mean, I don't know if it's scary as much as it's problematic. You know, there's, well, there's scary. a yeah, downside I mean. to it. Yeah. It is problematic if you only see your own viewpoint being represented yeah. all the time. Right. Um, yeah, it's, and, and it would give you the impression that you have this... Well, I'm looking at the World Wide Web, but somehow, you know, everyone <laughs> okay. everyone seems to agree with me. Yeah, you know? yeah, you definitely get the I'm always right going yeah. on in your head. I mean, that happens already in River West, where I feel like there's not enough... Questioning of yourself? Yeah, questioning of the sort of paradigm here, you know? Yeah. That's what I liked about high school, was that you were around all kinds of people, you know? That's true. Mm-hmm. At least within, again, within that neighborhood or whatever. And that's but at something least... you never really experience again in life. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. That type Very of few places can you experience right. that. Church might be one of them, you know, where you get to meet people from different that's, walks of life. That's or, true. You know, different points. Sort of, you know, but they're I all. I never thought of church that way, but you're right. Yeah. AA actually was AA one was place where I got to meet people from the hospital. That's a good point. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't really get to have a whole like conversation in a hospital, but oh, I don't know. I, you meet I all think kinds it's of people in hospitals. Especially well, as if a you're patient? like, well, no, as, as a like family member, or if you're a, a worker there, if you're or a nurse if you're, or somebody, yeah, I'm sure you come across yeah, if you're all, a nurse all the walks. Yeah, but well, you're always seeing people at their worst, or in their well, you see or them at their vul- best as or well. Or most vulnerable. You see when all. families really come together and all those things. But yeah, yeah, I think it's re- always refreshing to be uh, in a situation where you're among like people who um, aren't like yourself, and you, it always just kind of. I don't know. Um, to me, just kind of it's healthy. It's hel- It seems. It seems healthy, and it gives it. Like I have like a reinforced sense of self. Sometimes just like I kind of see how I am different and alike from like many other people, and you know, I don't know. I like mm-hmm. it. I think it's yeah. a good thing. It's always good to be just sort of jarred out of your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. Once I've, in a while. Yeah, I've I've had a lot of roommates, and the ones that have like differed from the most have always kind of seemed to like you learn the most about yourself Uh around people that are very different from you yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that makes a lot of sense the radio station does it a little bit yeah yeah we definitely have a good variety of people coming Mm -hmm. in here i think it definitely does yeah yeah well that's weird oh Oh, we've got a customer. We have a customer. Of radio, a radio <laughs> customer. It says, live, she, it says live love on her shirt. So, Thank you. <laughs> uh, radio customer. Oh, and speaking of which, we have a bunch of um, pu- oh, public yes. notices. Okay, let's get to the public notices. We might want to We need split public them up. notice music. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we here, uh, we'll oh, make here, a note here, of here. that. We'll make a notice, <laughs> a notice of that. I like the first one. Secede now. Yeah. Secede now. Secede now. Secede from America? The Union, I guess, right? Secede from the Union. Okay. What else do you secede from? I guess you could secede from a few things if you're a member. Anything you're a member of, you can secede from, right? Yeah, you could secede from your family. Oh, Nick just put those right back down. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Well, one says, those uh, high big butts. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, that's, oh, that's a good one. Um... <laughs> This one, yeah, that goes of, out to big butts out there. Yeah, it's part uh, of seceding. <laughs> couple flyers. What one is that? For, is, that um, is that past due? Is that past? September it 14th. is, yeah. Okay, that one's done. Um, here's one. It says, want a, pro- want a production designer for your film? 
email Suze Peterson, S U Z E P E T E R S O N, at gmail.com. For those filmmakers out there who need a production designer, a production designer, this is pretty big time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have an uh, event uh, flyer here for the Steve Mackey, Steve Mackey Trio, um, the Wisconsin Fall Tour, uh, September 18th in Green Bay, um, and September 19th at the Milwaukee Jazz Gallery. Brought to oh. you, or Steve McKay's new release, North Beach Jazz. Right. Hmm. Brought to you by Steve McKay. Uh, here's an old one we've read before. It says, ch <laughs> check out MediocracyTV.com. Yeah, give them another shout-out. Gave them one more shout-out. Yep. Do you have any, Jim? Um, no, I, I just had to see. Oh, okay, session. here, I'll give you a couple more. Oh, oh hold on, very good. <laughs> hold on, i got to read this correctly. The only constant is change? <laughs> it's a question, <laughs> not a statement. <laughs> I don't know if I did that right. Uh, I think you did that, right? Uh, and infinite beauty at every scale. At, okay, sorry. Hold on. Infinite beauty at every scale, everywhere. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a question or a statement. There is no punctuation on that one. Here it says, what I want, a small house with many trees and someone to help me rake up all the leaves. Aww. Aww. All right. Well. Moving right along. <laughs> yep. That's the, our announcements for today. Those are our announcements. Uh, and anyone listening, you can always put an announcement in our announcement box. And it'll be read on Jim and Friends Read the News as well as many other shows. Oh, I got another quick little headline here. Um, I'm sure there's science that we could go into, but we're not necessarily always about getting the scientific. But Antarctic's ozone hole smaller than in, in 2011. Oh, so that's a good thing. That would be a good thing. The huh. hole, they say that it's getting smaller because of the the, the bands and stuff that we've done on, uh, like, aerosols and all oh. the type of stuff oh. that we used to in the 80s just throw into the air. Just let that stuff fly, really. Mm. But uh, now that we finally are starting to, you know, put some limitations on that type of stuff, the hole's, the hole's getting smaller. hole's getting smaller. Well, that's well, that, that's, that's kind of like... Um, says that some of those regulations are worthwhile. Yeah. I, I'm not against regulation. Republicans, they're the ones that are against regulation. They're against, quote unquote, big government. Right. Too well, and government. regulation. Right. Well, t government does. Government regulates. Yeah, that's true. Those two okay, go hand in go. hand. Good point. All right, you got um, me there. <laughs> For example, BP oil spill should have, uh, what's his name, Rand Paul came out against um, reprimanding BP for their oil spill. Mm. Yep. Let the marketplace deal with it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, but I, I mean, that's extremist. That is extreme. It's pretty extreme. I mean, because that's like, well, that's where, like, I don't know, the commons, the, the whole idea of the commons. We have common water, common air, common earth, common different things that we all have to use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to let it on the free market means that it w lets everyone just mess it up as much as they want to. Mm -hmm. or, or use it up. Hoard it. Or yeah. use, use it, it up, right. Yeah, and hoard it. Use it, abuse it, maybe fix it. It always allows them to improve it too, but, you know, I don't know. There should definitely be limitations on the commons yeah that's all i'm saying water we need water don't let people screw up the water <laughs> that's all i'm saying um do you have anything over here nick uh, um, possibly a, a trio of new intriguing factoids possibly from sci-fi or Yes, from the science fiction uh, genre. Number one, I remember being intriguing. Something about Frankenstein. I'll let you look that up. And while you're looking that up... Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, 
Sorry. Oh, oh, we got a little mic issue here. That's all right. Um, oh, with that, uh, with that, go to O D D E E. So Adi dot com. Check out the ten most exciting extinct animals. There's some really good ones on there. Uh, number one, the dodo bird, which I, I always wish there were still dodo birds around. You know what? Couldn't there? There's dodo birds in museums yet, stuffed. Oh yeah. Can't we take oh, their stuffed? D- yeah. Can't we take their DNA out of their feathers and like clone those guys? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, well, there have been uh, I think a couple um, successful like um, extinct they, animals. Extinct animals that have been you know reintroduced. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, I Bring back I know I think extinct. It, I can't remember. I was. Just, I. I swear. I was just reading about some recent thing where they did that. I can't hmm. remember the actual animal that it was. But bringing back the dodo bird has a little to do. Did you have the Frankenstein article up here? Uh, uh-huh. I yeah. Help um, it is. Go oh, ahead and go. read that one. It's so Frankenstein, Fa- dodo birds, and Frankenstein. Uh, fascinatingly, a real life Dr. Dipple Frankenstein engaged in alchemical experiments to create an animate bioform called a homo homunculus yeah, no utilizing both animal and human cadavers at Castle Frankenstein in southwestern Germany in the late 1600s and early 1700s? What? Yeah, exactly. What? Isn't that cool? Real life Frankenstein in 16th and 17th centuries. Bio, an animate bioform called the homunculus utilizing both mm-hmm. animal and human cadavers. What? But, 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 yeah, but, we, we, I, I didn't get time. I just checked. I just saw that one. Didn't have time to research it. So if you're some listening to this here on the internet, check it out. Some 80 years later, Marion Piercy Shelley actually visited the castle in 1814, as documented in her travel log, History of a Six Weeks Tour. Conceivably, she was inspired by Dipple's work to pen her famous novel that was published in 1818. In that work, Dr. Frankenstein's first name was Victor, while that of his best friend was Henry. But for some inexplicable reason, the brain boxes at Universal interchanged the names from the 1931 classic film. No, yeah, why not? Just switch them around a little bit. You know, it gives it, it lets them say they did something. Sure. <laughs> but uh, should I read the next back to it? Um, I don't remember being as interesting, but go for it. Okay. Uh, well, actually, you want to pick up that call? Oh, yep. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Let me grab this. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Justin? Oh, the webcast of David Burns. Hey, yeah, David, the David Byrne webcast. Are we pirating his show right now, then? I, I don't I don't think this could possibly <laughs> qualify. qualify. <laughs> Can you hear us, Justin? It is really hard to hear you. I don't know if you can hear us. Sounds like he's having a great time. Yeah, is that, uh, well, tell, da- tell David Byrne, Jim and Friends sends their uh, wishes and thank you for for the. Uh, oh, whoa! What happened there? I don't know. Do you hear that? Oh, I think he hung up, and I still have the phone on. That's what happened. That's what it sounds like when the there's no phone and the phone's on. Huh. Fuzzy. Yep, sounds like that. Wow, okay. So now we know. But anyway, yeah, the Frankenstein guy. That's cool. I want to find out what a homunculus is. Yeah, yeah, homunculus. A homunculus? Weird. Yeah, I'll put a link on that, uh... On the page for that one, and and maybe we can re uh, bring back those dodo birds. Yeah. And the Tasmanian wolf, because that thing was looking I, pretty crazy. I just brought too. up homunculus on Wikipedia. Uh, homunculus is a term used generally in various fields of study to refer to any representation of a human being. Oh. Hmm. Well, not that interesting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The mystery was better. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't a homunculus like a little human that grew out of your body or something? Like what? Oh, Latin yeah. for a little man. I thought it was like a homunculus was like if you had a an extra. Sometimes people will be born with a 
a second head. Like, a second like head you know how you have like Siamese twins, mm -hmm. but occasionally the Siamese twin is just super under underdeveloped, so they just uh, end up being like a tiny little, a tiny little yeah, lump on your shoulder, and yeah. it's like an actual little skeleton of a, another brother or oh, something wow. like that Way. on your body. Oh, I've heard that, or like a little. Or, or else like a that, I've heard of or that something too, like maybe like a woman who has so. I've heard of like an 83 year old woman who um, had like the is found with a skeleton baby in her womb like that never came out oh wow like a, got pregnant had a baby but it never came out hmm I've heard of that too it just stays well, in the body again going to South Park second like South Park humong reference that'd be a really boring was... existence to have to live inside some woman's yeah. womb for all that time that's true that would be... Well, you wouldn't know any better, though. That's true. You would uh, think that's just what it is. Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, South Park reference. There was the lady who had the, the fetus on her head in one of the episodes. Anyone see that one? No. So I think that's what you're talking about. Ah, uh, like a little... Uh, another human... Yeah, it's like a Siamese twin, but the... Yeah. Yeah. So... It does, yeah. Apparent that it, it must exist. I think there's also South myths, Park myths about homunculuses, like that little little skeleton humans that are stuck hmm. in somehow fused into your body. I'm not sure how that relates to our Frankenstein. Yeah, I might be off completely. This is all based on things I don't. I'm just gonna stick with in 1600s. Frankenstein made a Frankenstein monster mm. for real, and mm -hmm. then Mary Shelley just like wrote about it. Mm. Even though they wouldn't have been, even though they didn't know they how didn't to exist at the same sterilize, time. right? Medical instruments yet? Yeah, but but people were. I mean, they were already doing surgery in the mm -hmm. like Andes and in Inca like oh. yeah um, society, yeah civilization. So they did brain surgery and stuff. So who knows what they were able to come yeah. to able to do? Yeah, hmm. I'm gonna keep with that mystery. There was some kind of weird half animal half person thing running around 16th century what was it germany yeah yep <laughs> of course it was germany well so we <laughs> we have about well it, is it looks like we have about so. five ten minutes left and oh yeah what we, we gonna do we were gonna talk oh, about some well it's good because justin's not here and he is our oh yeah jim and Conspiracy friends theory well we can master. cover like one of them yeah um maybe not the one that i have up there but uh Go to look up the 50 state conspiracy road trip. Oh. And as you look that up, uh, Alice, A I L I C E, scientists, which are the people who are running like the uh, col uh, CERN collider, uh, enter primeval plasma wonderland. Uh, so they started colliding multiple, uh, um, you know, particles together. Uh, in putting plasma together to look at how like suns are formed and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Plasma. I just like saying plasma. Plasma's got different meanings, right? Because you can yeah, have plasma, plasma like plasma. on. It's a on, state of. It's like in between it's like states. A state, or yeah, it's a state of being. I see. Um, I forget where it where it falls in the grand scheme of everything, but it does. Um. So. So anyway, the so 50 state uh, conspiracy road trip. Is that what yeah, you're Yeah, you find about? it? Yeah. Yeah, go on to there and find one of the... Because the, they're nice little short conspiracy theories. It was going to be conspiracy theory show, but we did not get to it today. Next week, we will have the nine biggest conspiracy theories and uh, their, and a little a little something about those. That sounds great. So next week, state, uh, come tune in. 9 to 10, as always, on riverwestradio.com. And if you're listening to this, are you sure you have found it? Because I don't know how you couldn't find it and listen to this at the same time. Um, ah, Facebook link. Never mind. So, 9 to 10, riverwestradio.com. Right. Eastern, or no, Central Time. Central Standard Time. Central Standard Time. I think they're all Standard Times, though, aren't they? Like, there's Eastern Standard Eastern Standard Time, Mountain, I don't know, whatever. There are a lot of conspiracies here, Jim. Is there one that you were thinking of? Well, just grab one. They're all great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Pick a state. Well, 
Okay. Oh, a state? Well, I mean, they're, they're, you got the states. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. That might be part of the problem. Oh, um, it's the 50-state conspiracy road trip. It should be on... Um, oh, shoot. Where was it? Here, we'll pass it over. Yeah, here. I'll grab this. Anyone have anything coming up that they want to let people know about? Oh, here it is. Um, well, just that we're having our fundraiser September 28th uh, from 8 p.m. to closing, which is oh, a yeah. s Friday at Linneman's. Uh, so September 28th, I guess about two weeks from now, I'm guessing, a little over two weeks from now, mm -hmm. um, or a little less, a little over two weeks from now. A little less. A little less than two weeks from now? It's not this Friday, but next Friday. Really? Okay, that's real soon. Um, come one, come all. Okay. Anyone out there? Um, family members? Uh, Jim's family members? Well, I guess I can read it. Come yeah. and support. <laughs> River West Radio. River West Radio. Jim's girlfriend. <laughs> um... So, I have the Colorado Conspiracy Theory. Okay. I'll put a link to this thing on there again. But uh, there's 50 conspiracy theories for 50 states. Wisconsin's is just the um, the Koch brothers' conspiracy to take mm. control of Wisconsin government for yeah. their own likings. Mm. Yeah. I think we all... Like that's really... Like, that is like if that's, that's actually true. happening. Um, yeah, but, prove that one. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but no, Colorado's is the Denver Airport. Everyone mm. here of the Denver Airport. Mm. Well, murals in Denver Airport's baggage claim could be more than just artwork. Uh, many, including our own Jesse Ventura, believe they contain secret Masonic messages signifying a secret city built underneath the airport to protect the oh. rich and government officials during the rumored apocalypse of 2012. Oh, wow. And if you check out, like, yeah, just look up uh, Denver Airport Conspiracy, you'll look at these really weird... Moral uh, murals, no, yeah. murals. Mm. It's different. Murals, although murals are of morals, right? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, murals of like, uh, yeah, like of kind of like a, a, a chemical like wipeout and then like a rebirth and everything, huh. and people oh. are going underground and it's really weird. It would be the huh. right state for it to be, and I, I mean, uh, Colorado is just you know peppered with um, like you know. Uh, Nuclear Caverns. silos, yeah. like missile silos and stuff. Uh, it's really. It's I really love crazy. that and idea. And the whole nuclear mm -hmm. development. It's design. weird that, that it's weird that Jesse Ventura would be propagating a, a conspiracy theory. Because he, he had a whole like show. In government. Yeah, but he had a whole show. Yeah. Conspir I wonder what. I wonder well, what people like that find. You know, like once you're up there, once you're actually a governor, you must start knowing some stuff. You know. You would think so, but I'm not so sure anymore. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe you don't you know? know anything. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still under the impression that George Bush knows nothing. Yeah. Even though he was president. <laughs> I mean, people, are, you know, it's like the conspiracy theories of Bush. I think yeah. he didn't know a thing. Uh -huh. I really, I mean, I don't know. I just have a hard time it's feeling hard to like, know. He re like he really yeah. knew what he was doing. The sad thing is something He's just so never bad at talking. Yeah. But, oh, we'll never know. Yeah. yeah unless, so, unless someone leaks it out and we find out and, you know. Yeah. If the mystery is still there, yeah, you'll never know. Oh, we're almost out of time, though. We got mm -hmm. two minutes, so we got to yep. wrap up. Um, I'm yep. going to throw one more conspiracy theory out there since I got the thing right here. Um, boop -ba -doop -ba -doo. All right, Delaware, the 92 swap. Delaware is such a sweet, harmless little state. There's nothing sinister to see here. One might swing by the state capitol where an infamous political office swap took place back in 1992. Congressman... Tom Carper and Governor Mike Castle, then term limited, were rumored to have plotted with a unif unified Democratic Party to swap offices by hosting virtually uncontested election contests. In other words, nothing unusual. Hmm. Yeah, it's just politics as politics go, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like the Wisconsin conspiracy theory. Yep. Nothing really too much. Not a huge surprise. No, not as cool as Denver's airport and under no i like that you can make a movie based on that that denver airport concept absolutely and with that little bit of conspiracy theories remember next week will be the nine best conspiracy theories and uh, 
Until then, everyone have Sounds a good like good week. Thanks again, Zod. Thanks again, Nick. Thanks, Jim. This yep. has been Jim and Friends. Read the news, September 16th edition. And don't forget, if you need a production designer for your film, email suzpeterson at gmail.com. All right. And the uh, River West Radio fundraiser, yep. September 28th at Linneman's. Yep. All right. Be there. We'll have raffle prizes, food, and a kind of like a variety show representing the whole radio. So. All right. Thank you. Until next time, this has been Gentlemen Friends Read the wow. News.